What's up guys, hope you are having a great day and in this video I want to focus on type conversion in JavaScript. In the last video we touched a little bit on the different data types and how flexible JavaScript is in defining data types. What you can do with type conversion is whenever you want to output a data type that is not from the expected type, JavaScript will convert it to the expected value following a couple rules. What I want to do first is to start off with a variable so let's say let val. The first conversion that I want to do is a number to a string. So on the line below, let's say that we want to do number to string. And let's set val equal to a function called string. And every function always has an opening and closing parentheses. So also let's add that one. And what we want to do is to add a number inside the parentheses, which we want to convert to a string. So let's say two. On the line below, well, if we save it right now, nothing will be printed out on the screen. So let's create a console.log, and that's console.log val. Let's save it. And you can see that the color is, well, white, and the value has been changed to a string. And to double check that, we could create a new console log. But instead of console logging val, let's create, let's say that we want to console log type of space val. Let's save it. And you can see that the type of val is equal to a string. We could do something else as well because we can create a new console.log and we could say that we want to know the val punctuation mark and you can see the length. Save it. And the length is one, which is true because, well, we have one character right here. And if we change two to 20, you can see that the length is equal to two because there are two characters. What we could write below our val is to define a new val. And we need to set it equal to a string again. So a string function, excuse me. And we can do an expression right here. So let's say that we want to know what two plus two is. Let's save it. And the output is four, still a string, and the length is one, because it will do the calculation first, which will be equal to four, and the length of four is one. What we also could do is to go from a Boolean to a string. So we could convert a yet true or false to a string. And let's say that we will have variable val again, which is equal to the string function. And inside the parentheses, let's say true. Save it. You can see that the output is true. The type has been changed to a string and the length is four. And if we change true to false, the output is false, string, and five for the length. We could also convert a date to a string. So let's say date to string. Let's say val equal to string function again. Inside the parentheses, we need to use a new space date. So we need to use a function inside a function because the new date is a function. And you can see that because of the parentheses, which is also stored inside a string function. Save it. I don't know what went wrong right there, but it doesn't matter. You can see that the time of today has been outputted on the screen. The type has been changed to a string and the length is 40. So it will count every character inside this string. We could convert an array to a string. So let's say array to string by setting val equal to a string function again. And inside the parentheses, let's add brackets. And inside the brackets, let's add a couple of numbers. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's save it. And you can see that the output is, well, a string because the brackets have been removed. The type is a string and the length is 11. Next to the string function, there is another function that we could use in JavaScript, which is the toString function. So let me add a comment again, because we are going to focus on the toString method. Let me zoom in a little bit. All right. Usually, you use the toString method to convert numbers to a string. So let's set val equal to parentheses. And inside the parentheses, we need to add a number. So let's set five. Outside our parentheses, let's set a punctuation mark. And we want to use the toString function. 
So let's save it. And you can see that the output is five, the type is a string, and the length is one. Obviously, what we did right here was turning numbers, date, time, and arrays into a string. But we could also turn strings into numbers. The first thing that we need to do is to change the length. So in our last console log, to two fixed, because you can only get the length on strings. And the two fixed function is used to format a number using fixed point notations. If we go, well, right below our two string, let's create a new comment called string to number. And let's set val equal to single quotes, semicolon. And inside the single quotes, let's add a number five. Right now, if we save it, we will be getting undefined because it's not possible to convert a string to a two fixed function. If we remove the single quotes, on the other hand, let's save it, you can see that the output is five. And well, the two fixed function doesn't work. And just like the string function, there is obviously a function which will convert a string to a number, which is called number. Let's wrap five in parentheses, save it, and the type has been changed to a number. Let's add single quotes around the five, save it, and the type is still a number even though we have added a string. I forgot to mention that the two fixed method takes a parameter and the parameter is basically a named variable passed into a function. So let's say, well, even the two string, if we add a string right here, we are passing in one variable. So after the two fixed, let's add a set of parentheses and let's write down one inside of it. Let's save it. And you can see that the output is 5.0. And if we change it to two, the output is 5.00 because we are adding a decimal number. So we want two numbers after the punctuation. We could also parse a Boolean to a number. So Boolean to number by setting val equal to number. And inside our parentheses, let's add false. Save it. Now be aware that the output of false in every programming language is equal to zero. So let's say false is equal to zero, and obviously true is equal to one. So if we convert a number to false, the output will be zero. And if we change it to true, the output will be one. Now, I also need to show you what will happen if we put a string directly inside the number function. So string text to number. So let's set val equal to the number function again. Inside the parentheses, let's add a string of my name is Dari. Let's save it. And you can see the output is NAN for the output and the two fixed function. And the NAN stands for not a number. So let me add that as a comment as well. NAN is equal to not a number. And this is used to represent the result of a mathematical calculation that cannot be represented as a meaningful number. That is actually correct because we have added a string inside our number function, which is equal to, well, not a number. So right now we're trying to convert a string that is not a number, which is not possible. And the same thing will happen if we change the string to an array. So let's say array to number and val is equal to number again. Inside the parentheses, let's add brackets. And inside the brackets, let's add one, two, three, four, five, six again. If we save it, the output is still not a number for the two fixed and the value. Even though you have numbers inside your array, because the type is still an array and not numbers. Now, obviously, in programming, there is always a way to get around of things. And in this case, it's by using the parseInt built-in function in JavaScript. So let's set val, or well, let me add a comment because we are parseInting. Let's set val equal to parseInt. And inside the parseInt parentheses, let's add a string number. So let's say 50. Let's save it. And you can see that the type has been changed to number and the output is 50. What we're doing right here is parsing an entire world or a rounded number. If we change 50 
50 to 50.50, save it, the output is still 50 and 50.00. The reason why this is happening is because the parseInt function parses an integer and not a float or decimal number. And once again, there is a way to fix this because instead of using parseInt, we need to use parse float. So let's set val equal to parse float again. And inside the parentheses, let's add single quotes and let's add a decimal number of 100.50. Let's save it. And you can see that the output is 100.50 and the two fixed is 100.50 again. This was it for the video about type conversion in JavaScript. I hope that I gave you a good overview of what type conversion actually is. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.